Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about a film that is turning 50 this year. One that is uh, very beloved and uh, is, has a very iconic character. Um, of course, by the title, sure, you know what uh, the film is. But uh, that film is, of course, uh, Clockwork Orange. Um, now, a lot has been said about this film, so I don't know what I could totally say that's brand new and uh, uh, original that uh, isn't essentially my own experience with this film. Um, I first saw this when I was a teenager, 13, 14 or so, and I uh, was very... Mesmerized by what I was seeing, you know. Of course, uh, in the world of today, and even when I was a teenager, uh, the the this film isn't is actually fairly tame uh, compared to some of the films that are made around that time and today, um, and in between. Um, back back in 1971, you know, this film had a lot of controversy. Um, People said that there were uh, uh, cases of violence that happened that were inspired by Clockwork Orange, due to the various like natures of like some of the crimes. Like the film, there is um you know people getting beaten and somebody is killed uh, accidentally, but you know somebody is killed. Um, there's also rape, which is all. You know, always a big is always a huge uh, is always a huge thing in film. You know, it's something that's a, it's a subject matter that is quite you know very heavy and are obvious reasons. Um, but back in 1971, that sort of thing wasn't depicted too often. I mean, it was in films here and there, but. You know, it seemed to be like gone was the old days of things being implied. And and even in this film, it is still implied because you don't see it actually happen. But uh, everything leading up to it is actually very... It's very telling of what's about to take place. And, um, you know, the age I saw is just like, wow. You know, especially when looking at how old the film was, I'm like, just wow, the fact that they were able to make this film this way is just, I was very astonished by it. And, um, you know, the, the character Alex Delarge, played by Malcolm McDowell, is one of the, seen as one of the mo uh, most iconic villains of all time, especially because of the bowler hat and the Fake eyelash that he wears on his right eye. Um, the film is made by Stanley Kubrick, of course, and uh, it's based off of a book of the same name by Anthony Burgess. And um, and I have read the book. Um, and of course, there's a big difference in that the last chapter of the book is not shown in the film. Like. I've heard various stories like originally that was never written into the book, like that last chapter, until later on, like some like a year or two later, in order to get distribution, like in America, another ending had to be implemented. So another chapter, um, and the way that that ending is, the last chapter, it's like makes you wonder if this character could totally be redeemed in any way because you know throughout the film you know he goes through so many things like he's not a good character and yet you're following him and to a degree you want to see him change you want to see Alex better himself and you know he sees droogs and later you see what happens to two of the droogs you know um, spoilers they become police officers you don't know what happens to the other one but uh, I think you could say he changed his ways too. You know, he went to prison for, again, murder. Um, 
and he, uh, yeah, they, uh, just seeing what all transpires from there and them trying to get him to be, uh, oh, good and be better, um, makes you wonder if what was going on was actually ethical in that, well, you know, sure, ref you know, of course, reforming criminals is always a good thing. It's just the ways that were done about to help and try to reform Alex into being a good model citizen whenever he's out, able to be released out to the world, makes you wonder whether or not uh, those uh, methods were right or not. Um, and, you know, on the last line of the film makes you really think, like, you know, was he really cured, or was it just something to where he, uh, sort of repressing something until the moment arrived. And, you know, uh, the, the, this fil the film is very, very, uh, very good. Um, in that regard, um, of course, this is a film that not everybody enjoys because of the content. Um, so if one hasn't seen this film and then they watch it, because of the things I've said, you know, they, it could turn off some people from, uh, enjoying it or being intrigued by it. Um, which I think is also quite, uh, you know, that's valid. Um, this is a film that, you know, not everybody would love off the, right off the bat, if at all, um. You know, I enjoy it, but that's just because of uh, just the sort of the questions that it asks. Is it, it's quite interesting, I think, of whether some of the things that are done to Alex are good or not. Um, is he changed at the end of the film, or is what he says at the end an indication of he's just going to go back to doing what he's just going to do? Um... I think everybody pretty much has the same sort of opinion, but it's something that, you know, upon rewatching, makes me wonder if, uh, it's like, you know, could he change for the better of his own will, or will he not? You know, of course he changed for a period, uh, due to the circumstances, uh, when he was, uh, imprisoned, and, um, sort of reforming. The methods, though, they're, it's like, you know, they're effective. It makes you wonder, how long will they be effective? And if so, you know, uh, if they are permanent, was that ethical or not? Um, if they're temporary, could he ever redeem himself and be better? The book has that uh, happier ending. Um, but, you know, Kubrick didn't incorporate it in the film because he didn't think that he felt that they kind of, sort of ruined the book, essentially, and the story, like, that's just sort of, she was tacked on, um, to him, and, and, you know, Kubrick was somebody who was very meticulous in whatever he was doing, he was going to do it his way, and, of course, uh, like, so what he takes, um, and just, uh, doing very, uh, uh, having things planned out and having a, and he, he said that, you know, he doesn't know what he wants, but he always knows what he doesn't want, so, you know, it's like he's looking for something, he just doesn't know until he sees it, which is, is a bit, uh, it's unfortunate to a degree, um, David Prowse is in here, you know, Darth Vader, uh, the suit, uh, and in the suit, Darth Vader in Star Wars. Um, he actually had a comment to Stanley Kubrick because he had a, you know, at the, later in the film, he plays somebody who helps somebody in a wheelchair who, you know, if you watch the film, you know what how that came about. But, you know, he he's carrying him in the wheelchair by the handles. And, you know, he has to do that because it's Kubrick. A number of times, and he's like, "You're not called one take Kubrick, are you?" And he basically asked if he could, they could 
try and limit how many takes of that he'd have to do. And he laughed at that, but the whole crew thought that's just shocking and offensive, and just how dare you ever say that to Stanley Kubrick? Like, how how can you even think to even say that out loud? Um, but they were he's like, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Like, he'll do his best to try and limit, you know, how many times he has to carry him down the stairs in his wheelchair. Which, when watching that, you know, I'm like, I'm curious how many takes that had to take, uh, you know, knowing Kubrick. Um, but, yeah, um, you know, Malcolm McDowell really shines in this film. This was his breakout film, his breakout role. He did a film called If, a uh, few years prior, and he was really good in that. Um, but this really helped uh, set him, uh, set his career really in in gear. Um, though because of the character, uh, unfortunately it kind of typecast him in this sort of villainous role. But then again, he plays that part so well that, you know, it's not surprising that he kind of got, got typecast in that, but... You know, he is a fantastic actor. Um, he got nominated for a Golden Globe, but didn't get an Oscar nomination. I think he should have been nominated for an Academy Award. You know, whether or not he would have won, you know, we'll never know, of course. But it'd be interesting to think about. Um, and uh, I think of the nominees of 1971 of the films, at least that year, and then nominated the following year for like the Academy Awards, I think you would have been worth uh, being nominated. Um, you know, this film was nominated for uh, four Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and lost all of them. Uh, um, and part of it, I'm sure, is because of the content. It, at that time, it, they likely were not going to nominate or honor this film with a win. Nominate, sure, um, but, you know, because at the time it was rated X. Um, of course, now, if, because as I said earlier, it's quite tame compared to some of the movies made today. You know, this is a, this is rated R for its content, and, um, yeah, and then for, in some countries, you know, this was banned for many years because of the con uh, content until some years later, like in Britain, because of some of the crimes that happened, uh, Kubrick made sure it could never be seen and shown at all in Britain because he felt responsible, especially since he got death threats um, from people. He had a poll from theaters when it was in theaters, and so he ensured that in Britain the film could never be shown. Um, though, after his death in 1999, they were able to release the movie, and now people uh, can view it. Um, and this is a classic, regardless of one whether one likes it or not. It is a classic. It is a film that people, as time goes on, see it, watch it. Whether they enjoy it or not is a different story. Um, everyone's different. I just think it's a very interesting film. It's like a interesting character study on a guy who is very messed up, to say the least. Um, if you've seen the film, you know uh, what I talk, what I'm talking about, and perhaps you know messed up is probably a, a, a understatement. Um, and if you haven't seen it, well, if you're interested. Uh, uh, maybe give it a watch at some point. Um, the music is also good, you know, a lot of uh, Beethoven, because he's a, Alex DeLarge is a big fan of Beethoven. Um, and yeah, uh, this is a famous film, a very iconic film, and uh, it's been parodied a lot over the years, and uh, The Simpsons, uh, 
in one of their early Halloween episodes, Bart was dressed as Alex. And then later, in the other seasons, I saw they did a Clockwork Orange parody at the end of one of the Halloween specials. And at the end, there was like a combination of like Eyes Wide Shut, 2001, Shining, and some other Kubrick films were mentioned in there. Um, so yeah, that's how well-known and popular this film is. It's been parodied to some extent as time has gone on, and um, I definitely see why. Um, regardless if it won any awards or not, big or small, this is a film that people often watch over and over again and just sort of enjoy it or are at least fascinated by it. And uh, yeah, seeing this as a teenager was really like quite, quite interesting to me. Um, uh, I hadn't really, well, I had seen various films. Like, very, like horror films and stuff, so in terms of violence and stuff, it was quite tame, but at the same time, for a film of its nature, it was still, still quite shocking and, uh, to see, at the very least, um, and very good. Um, and of course, you know, and I, uh, I can't hear Singing in the Rain the same way ever again after this film. I no longer think of Gene Kelly, I think of Malcolm McDowell, and whether that's a good thing or not, I guess that's up to you um, to make that deci decision if you're the same way. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about this film. Um, just my own experience and just some of the stuff that happened in the aftermath of its release. Um, yeah, what do you think of the film? Have you seen it? Do you like it, dislike it? Uh, have you never seen it but are curious? Have you heard about it? Um, comment if you like. And, uh, yeah. And that's really it. I'll uh, see you next time. Hope you all have a great day, great weekend, and a great week.